We live in a world that uses video game engines to make movies. That is insane. Some might even say unreal. Um, like any technology, there's a way to optimize the engine. In this case, UE5. To harness its full power, saving time, and stress on your computing system. So what do we do? We've got some tips today that'll take your cinematic masterpiece in engine and make it ready for the LED volume. Number one, building your environment around your framing. One of the most important principles in video is plopping the camera down and seeing the frame. This way we can dress and light around it. Let's steal from that thought. You don't want to overpopulate parts of your environment that are never going to be seen. Building everything is unnecessary. To make your project shine, you're going to need to optimize your work. Imagine the pain you'd feel if you built an entire city, but only one block was used in the final shots of the project. Be efficient, know the shots in the storyboard, and build your scene. Number two, subtlety is key. Subtlety in world building reveals things about your world to the audience that you want them to know. In this case, less is often more. Let me explain. Just because you built a massive landscape doesn't mean every shot needs to reveal all of the work that you've done. Sometimes zooming into a close little detail that you spent some time on reveals more about your world than a massive landscape. Small details give your world character, and that character can work in tandem with your shot, your sequence, or even your whole movie. So just like the last tip, you need to know your storyboard and where you can plug in all of those hours of environment building. Number three, Build what you know. Now there's a paradox to this one, because yes, you can build a blue sea planet with furry trees and frog people, you just don't know exactly what that would realistically look like. Now let's say you're building your own house. You know the nooks, you know the scratches in the floor, and the chipped edges of the stairs. Things that, again, bring character to your scene. Going with what you know reveals your mind to the audience, your perspective, and things that you think the audience should know. Building what you know allows your environment to tell the story that already exists. You don't have to make one up or bring things in that may confuse the audience. Number four, hyperrealism the environment version of the Uncanny Valley. Now the Uncanny Valley comes with robotics and human simulations. There's a helpful graph that looks like this. This high point is where a robot doesn't really look like a person, so we as humans feel comfortable looking at it. This low point is about 90% real, but our human brains see that something is off, so we start to feel uncomfortable. Now the same thing can go for your environment building. When making an environment in UE5, yes, you can make things look super realistic, but never true to life. Now I know that people are gonna disagree with me on this one, but I have yet to see an Unreal Engine rendered project that doesn't quite look like a video game to me. And that's because our brains are really good at sorting out what isn't quite real. So when you make your environments, keep that paradox in mind. The trees in Unreal Engine look good for a video game, but would they hold up if they were put in a video with trees? No. Sometimes the depiction of a tree, something blurry in focus or dark so the details are hidden, gives our brain a better signal of reality than an in-focus simulation of a hyper-realistic tree. When building your environment, it's not so much about making sure the environment looks real to you, but rather how it looks in camera. Number five, matching real world props and lighting to the virtual world. One of the biggest things we can do is bridge the divide between the physical and the virtual assets used on set and in our project. Know what environmental props are realistically going to be on set when we're shooting and what type of lighting we can do in Unreal that we can match to the real world. So don't go off and make a lighting simulation in Unreal Engine that would be impossible to replicate in the real world because our real actors on the LED volume won't really be able to be lit properly to match. In the same way, if you don't have access to space rock props, 
don't go putting them all over your scene in Unreal Engine. There's gonna be a distinct divide between the virtual assets and the physical assets, and we'll be able to tell where the seam is. The virtual world can also be color matched to the physical. Set your balance between limitless and realistic. Again, in in-camera VFX, our goal is to cheat the image in camera, not the eye. So that's why most of the time when you see a BTS of virtual production, it'll look a little off. In camera, it might look perfect. All right, that's environment building. But what about optimizing your project to put it on the big screen? It's LED volume time. Here's some quick tips for optimization. Make sure the computer that's outputting the project to an LED volume is suitable. Check out our PC video for a general guide. As an environment artist, aim for a frame rate that's two to three times that of the captured frame rate. So if we're shooting in 24 frames a second, I'd say it's safe to aim for 60 frames. Ray tracing is fun, but it might not be necessary. Bake in your lighting. Set any rendering dynamic high quality features early as any adjustments could impact other settings along the way. If you need dynamic lighting, ask yourself if you want dynamic shadows because in our experience, dynamic shadows are really what cause performance issues. And last, remember, the static set extension is less expensive than a dynamic background. See, getting a project prepared for the volume is all about performance. You wanna do anything to reduce the power being sucked from your PC's processors and graphics cards to allow for the least latency possible. Low latency, is key. Please check out our virtual production playlist for more videos specifically focused on virtual production. I'm Josh, you're watching Copilot, and I'll see you in the next video.